So why are we going to Chinon today? Another chateau destination? Well, I'll tell you shortly. We're on the banks of the River Vienne again, 12 kilometres above where it joins the Loire. Now here's something you should recognise. Can you tell what it is yet? Rabelais was born near here and he still sits here taking in the scene. And from this bridge you can do the same. And up there, yes, the chateau. Henry Plantagenet, Henry II of England, held title to this place long before he became King of England and, I am told, died here. Now look there, there's a lift up to the high town. Oh, and it's free. Right then. Now when we arrived at the gates to the chateau, and this is irony, I think, I'm not quite sure, but we find that at least that entrance was closed because of restoration. Premier étage. Couverture des portes. And you had to do a three mile trek round to get to the other entrance. Would you like your picture taking pews? It's good that net. Unfortunately it seems to be closed for restructuration. I've already explained all that. So eventually we see this vaguely pointing in this direction. We'll have a look over the V bass while we're here. But to cut a long story short, what with my knee and everything, I did the first few meters of that detour and then returned to the V bass. Where we find a plaque telling us about that visit of Joan of Arc. And whilst we wander aimlessly through these medieval streets, let me tell you why I'm not sadly in uh, Angers today. I discovered protest number three. There's a 24-hour rail strike today, and the train to Chino was the only one that was going and sure to get back. Is that irony as well? Anyway, on the Impasse Plantagenet, we find the Church of Saint Maurice, which was built by Henry II in the 12th century. On our further wanderings through these lovely streets, we see this rather nice pussycat sat in a window. And the Church of Saint Etienne, built around 1480. I think that might be Joan of Arc there. And somewhere up one of these very steep hills uh, was a chapel of Sante Radagonda, but I couldn't find it. So we take our short train trip back to Tour. It's our last day and we catch a bus to the airport at about noon. So while we look at some shops I couldn't fit in elsewhere, Let's do a bit of a summary. In spite of the knee and the three protests strikes resulting especially in missing Angers and forgetting my notes on Poitiers, the trip was enjoyable and instructive. We've got a couple of hours before the bus so we're just having another wander around tour. This flower and plant market stretched hundreds of yards along one of the boulevards. I admire the French, especially for what they have achieved as a nation since World War II. I wish that our public services and general civic pride were as good. I just wish they were a bit more, well, friendly, like, say, the Italians or the Syrians. While you enjoy the rest of these shots, can I just tell you something that I found out since I got back? Charlemagne the Great, who we mentioned earlier, established his court at Aachen. One of Charlemagne's missions 
was to re-establish some of the literacy and learning of classical times. The Bible was to be the chief instrument to be used here, and Jerome's version was the currently available most authentic version. Charlemagne invited Alcuin of York, believed to have been taught by Bede, to come from his abbey school at York and lead a project, as we would call it now, to further purify the Bible in the light of later learning. Alcuin completed this work and what is sometimes known as Alcuin's Bible was rolled out throughout Charlemagne's empire. Copies were produced at the monasteries of Tours, Orléans and several others. Alcuin eventually retired to the monastery of St. Martin in Tours. He later died there in 804 and is buried there. Oh, uh, just hang on a minute. Uh, since returning, I've been reading this book called The History of the Kings of Britain by Geoffrey of Monmouth. It appears that Britain was founded by Brutus. You'll see the relevance of all this shortly. Now, this wasn't the Brutus who stabbed Julius Caesar. He was the leader of the Trojans who were in captivity in Greece after the fall of Troy. These Trojans, led by Brutus, finally left Greece to find a new home. After consulting the gods, Brutus was told in a dream to sail to an uninhabited island beyond Gaul. This they did and founded Britain. But that's another story. The point is that on their way they sailed into the River Loire, to reprovision themselves. They devastated the whole area, perhaps the first example in history of Britons, or future Britons anyway, causing trouble in France. Eventually, a big battle took place at a place now called Tours. It was called thus after a nephew of Brutus, who was called Tournus, who was killed and buried there. In his book, Geoffrey of Monmouth says that all the above was testified to by Homer, but I would take that with a pinch of salt if I were you.